Welcome back to Simple Truth. I got stuck, which is now like going to be my tagline. Welcome back to Simple Truth. I got stuck, right? Uh, when you read these stories, it's funny. When you're reading them for interpretation, right? When you're reading for God to unlock things, when you're letting God be your key master, right? And he unlocks the things that he's put within you, right? When he unlocks the things that are in your head and he just, he works through it all. It's amazing. When you're reading, just so you can say, I read through the Bible. It was fantastic. I read through the Bible. Uh, it's totally different, right? I've read through the Bible multiple, multiple, multiple times because I'm old and that's what pastors do, right? So I've read through it multiple times. It is crazy this year how many times I've just gotten stuck in the little tiny details, right? I know the story. I want to just read through it. I wanted to just get through. I told our wonderful producer that, hey, I'm going to be done with this chapter, you know, and like like three, I think it was like three videos ago, right? We're just going to go through these because I know what these dreams are about. But then you read it and you're like, well, wait a minute, 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 right? That's what the Holy Spirit does. We were talking about that last night in Bible study and it's fantastic, right? In nature, when you laugh. Let that happen. All right, so let's pick up with verse 16. I teased it last week. It says this. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there were all sorts of baked food for the pharaoh, but the birds were eating out of the basket on my head. Uh, I want you to understand, right? He listened to the previous dream right? He listened to the previous dream and he goes, oh, me, 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 right? I've seen this play out uh, entertainingly and not so entertainingly uh, in prayer moments, right? There have been times where I or other people have asked for prayer from somebody, right? And you get this flowing, like God has great things for you. God has got plans for you. God loves you. He thinks you're the greatest thing in the world. And so then what happens? You now look back and you got a line of people, oh, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, right? And I've sat there when uh, the word for the next person or maybe three people down is not so favorable, right? If you're going to ask for prayer, I've said this repeatedly to, for, for people of my church, right? Be careful what you wish for, right? Because you're giving somebody who has insight and maybe even interpretation, you're giving them the ability to pray over you free, right? We have a couple, I've told you before, that, that I go to, to to ask for prayer for me. And when I do, it's always the same thing. You have permission. I give them permission to speak into my life. Whatever it is that God sends you, whatever God tells you, tell me, right? Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's ugly, just tell tell me what it is that God has told you, right? And again, there's that fear and trepidation moment. I know me, right? And I'm guessing that I'm okay with God, you know, kind of banking on that. But what if there's some hidden sin? What if there's some things that I haven't done? What if there's a bunch of stuff? What if there's things that I know I'm doing? Right? I'm trying to hold back the fact that I have a Pepsi addiction, right? Like, so you're, you're looking at that and saying, when, when's gonna God going to call me out on that, right? When's God going to say, uh, Andy, I've been trying really nicely to let you figure this out, right? But you're not figuring it out. So this guy, he gets excited and he heard the first uh, dream and then he tells his dream. Like, there's a humongous difference between these two dreams, right? The first one is about grapes that come and they, they ripen and it's a beautiful thing, right? The second one is about basket full of food that birds then are eating. Those are two totally different dreams, right? He knew that before he mentioned it. Like, he knew what his dream was before he had them interpreted. He just assumed it was going to be a favorable interpretation. He assumed it was all going to be good, right? And so here's Joseph's response. Well, and Joseph answered and said, this is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. So stop. Can you imagine this guy be like, yes, just like the first guy, three days, three days, three days, right? And then in three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you, hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat the flesh from you. Uh, that's not what you wanted to hear, right? That's not at all what you wanted to hear. Like all of a sudden, that's a repentance moment. That's a, do you have your, do you have your house in order with God? Three days. Can you imagine that man 
waiting for the next three days. All of a sudden, your prayers have turned from, hey, I hope Joseph can interpret to this that I hope Joseph is a false prophet, right? I hope this doesn't come true. Can you imagine the panic in your life if you knew that? Three days, your head is going to be hung and birds are going to eat you. Like, that's not where we want to be. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful when we're seeking interpretation. We need to be careful when we're seeking for those who can unlock things within us. Because again, sometimes it unlocks good things and blessings and favor. Sometimes it unlocks the fact that we have things to work on, right? That if we don't work on, but God's saying like, hey, there's judgment coming right? Restoration comes for those that are seeking God and saying, hey, I already know there's things I need to work on, and I need you to help me with those, God, right? Judgment comes from those that know they should probably be working on things, and they're not working on things, right? So at this moment, we get a great opportunity. Joseph's interpreted two things, two dreams, right? And he's said specifically, three days, you'll know in three days, you'll know in three days, you'll know in three days, right? So in verse 20, it says this, on the third day, right? Well, that gives you a clue that, uh uh-oh, Joseph's interpretations are going to be true in nature. All of a sudden, Joseph isn't a false prophet, right? Pharaoh's birthday. Now, this is fantastic, right? Because I love the fact that God puts in little tiny details, right? The little details are as follows. Oh, it's Pharaoh's birthday. Why, Why do we need to know that? Why out of all the words that the Bible has, all the things that I do want to know that are in there, right? Like who's Cain's wife? Like that's a good that's a good thing. That'd be one word, by the way, answer. Uh, but those aren't in there. Instead, we get, oh, it's Pharaoh's birthday, right? So Pharaoh is celebratory in nature, right? Because he made a feast for all of his servants and lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. So he did exactly what Joseph said. He brought them back into the fold. Woohoo! Yeehaw! It came true. Can you imagine, right? If you're the cupbearer, you're walking in and you're pretty confident in this whole thing. It's happened exactly like Joseph said. If you're the baker, you're a little nervous because you get lifted up in front of the servants. You get brought back in front of people. This is not a private execution, right? God promises that if we aren't careful, he'll reveal the hidden things, but in such a way that other people are going to get to learn from them. Other people are going to get to be warned by them. Other people are going to get to see them. We don't know what the cupbearer did. We don't know what the baker did, but we know they both got lifted up like Joseph said. And then here's what it says. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted for them. You know what this sounds like to me? This sounds like uh, when Jesus was talking about like, hey, two people are going to be out in the harvest field. One's going to be taken. One's going to be not taken. Oh, two people are going to be walking. One's taken. One's not taken. This whole two idea, right? And one's going to be taken and one's not going to be taken, right? So we look at this story and we say, hey, the cupbearer got lifted back up and the baker lost his head, got hanged, right, from this whole thing, right? What this did was give and set, right, up. It set up Joseph for where God's going, right? So we're at this moment, we're like, man, here's the hero moment. Joseph is obviously the hero, just like Daniel was the hero, right? In Daniel's story, he saved a bunch of ungodly people who were out to get him, Right, he saved them because he answered the dream that nobody else could answer, and and at that time the king said, "Hey, if you can't answer this for me, I'm going to kill you all." And Daniel was going to be included in that, mm-hmm. right? So the king here, mm-hmm. right, is lifting up these guys. This is a perfect time. You and I both know what's going to happen, right? The cupbearer is going to talk to Pharaoh and say, you, "You're never going to believe what happened. Never going to believe what happened." All of a sudden, it's going to be this moment where he tells Pharaoh, hey, Joseph did this for me. Like, this is all about Joseph. He told me all this. You got to go save this guy from prison. He's unjustly put there. His family is wackos. All of this stuff, right? It's going to happen that way. And then we get to the end of chapter 40. Look at verse 23. It says, yet the chief cupbearer did not 
remember Joseph, but forgot him. What happens when you do all the work? What happens when you unlock people? What happens when you're doing the ministry of God? What happens when you're speaking for God? You're doing right things and they forget you. What happens when it looks like it should be a moment to lift you up, but you feel like you've been forgotten? Right? You look at what your work is doing. You look at what you're accomplishing. You listen to people say, hey, listen, we're in the best place we've ever been. Right? We, this is the best part of our marriage. This is the best part of our life. This is the best part, whatever. And you're like, wow, I've been investing in these people. Right? And, and this is what's happened. This is really exciting. And then about mm, five minutes later, right, you totally forget. And all of a sudden, they forget you or or God seems to have forgotten you, right? Imagine Joseph, I believed in God. I got the interpretation for these dreams. I helped these two guys out. I saved them from a lot of stress. Well, maybe not one of them, right? But I, I saved them, right? I answered, I did, I was obedient. And I got forgotten, right? So let me give you the tease for the next time that I film. And it's this in verse 41. Uh, verse 1, it says this. I don't even have to read it because I've studied it a whole bunch. It says this. After two years. Ha! 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 What happens when you do right things here and after two years? You know why I know that's important? Because I already did the video called Sometime After This. What happens when you do right things and God says, wrong time to lift you up right this second. Wrong time. What happens when it doesn't work the way you think it should? So here's my simple truth. It's really simple. Uh, do you feel forgotten after you've done right things? Hey, I'll see you next time on Simple Truth. Hopefully, not after two years.